Okay, so I'm doing the tutorial for the um, 3 x 3 flush museum uh, hidden enchantment table. Um, yeah, so let's do the closing. It's the closing. And this is the opening. It's pretty fast. It's not the fastest, but yeah. Um, this door is outdated, so it's no longer. For, uh, it's outdated for being smallest. The new smallest is 270 blocks, while this is 385. So, um, I made this for real Paul, link in the description. And this um, um, books go up to level 24, I believe, but you can make it go up to, I think, 27 or 28 by adding two bookshelves in the corner here. I'm not actually too sure. I can show you later. Okay, so let's actually get into this. So, we need an 11 by 5 by 7 area. Underneath your floor, so where you're walking, is 2 blocks. And then above that is an extra 4. Your stairs go like this um, from the 5th block. And they go downwards. Um, your enchantment table is situated like... So, you go to the 5, you go to the exact middle. You're going to go... So here, you're going to go one in, and then you're going to go, um, so one, two, three blocks, and you place your enchant table, and then you build a block rings around it, and then you build this kind of setup with the bookshelves. So let's get into the resources. Um, you need 27 sticky pistons, 12 normal pistons, 35 stairs. These stairs are where um, these glass blocks are. Um, also, one more thing, these glass blocks can have, cannot be solid blocks, so they can't be like stone or dirt, whatever. They must be stick, like transparent, but like, why would you have a hidden enchantment table if it's visible? So why are you going to have solid blocks here if you can literally just see where the enchantment table is hidden? So, you might as well just keep it stairs for the actual like use of this, otherwise it's useless. Um, 46 observers, uh, 26 building blocks, 12 dust, 10 repeaters, 4 comparators, 2 redstone blocks, 4 torches, um, 8 blocks of whatever. These blocks go around your enchantment table here. There's not one in the middle. Uh, you need 9 stairs. These are your actual hidden stair blocks in the middle here. 11 hoppers, 5 droppers, 3 slabs, 3 note blocks. A lever, and then your input block. I'm using line because sign and line go together. I mean, your enchantment table, 15 bookshelves, um, and then your items slash entities. You need nine unstackable items, eight um, 64 items, um, three chest mine cards, and one hopper miner, and that is it. Um, so it's not that much of a grind for resources, but it's still a, lot, a little. Okay, so let's actually get into this. So, um, let's start with the input. Well, not the input, but like the way that this actually works. So we're going to place um, three stairs like this, a sticky post in there, sticky here, three stickies under here, and then go to the other side and do the same thing. So this, this, and this. This will slide this out of the way. Um, we also um, use the fact that under this enchantment table is a stair as well. So place a stair under your enchantment table, like this. Enchantment table, please. Place a regular piston here. And then under this block, we're going to place a regular um, a stair. We're going to place this. So when this slides, it's going to put these two stairs in. These stairs go in these positions here. And the way we will extend them is by using a double extender here and here. We're also going to have another double extender there for afterwards. Yep, just making sure. That's for after. We'll that back. So that gets this, this, like that. We need to get these top ones and this middle one. So to do that, 
um, the top ones is kind of annoying. You're gonna have, I believe it's like this. I can't really remember. I believe it's like that. Yeah, it is. But we're gonna actually add another system with this and have a sticky here and then a regular and then this sticky. This sticky goes into this block here which extends this stair and the way we get this stair in is by double extending it from this side like so and then there's this block here I believe that's how it is um yes I am correct so the way that this works once we build this side it's one two three we're gonna put sticky here a regular piston a regular no, actually, this side's kind of jank. Um, I kind of forget how this side goes. Okay, I'm just dumb. E. Um, place piston here, piston here. Two. We need two stickies and then this. This will do the double extended to push back, and then this does the triple extended to push this back. And then we just have a simple double piston extender to slide this back. Yes, just making sure. Okay, we have a normal piston here and a normal piston here. And this is the entire layout. Now I'm going to quickly explain how this all works. So this powers, this goes, this, this. These power, like so. Um, this goes as well as this. Then you will. Then we have double extenders like this. And then on this back side, what we're going to do is extend this. Do this. And then we're going to actually add three sticky pistons here, which does this as well as the, the space only get power. And that will close it. Then the opening, this will retract. This goes, sorry, this goes like that. Um, these will do a double extender. So, uh, I forgot to grab this. And then these will retract. Um, those will retract, this will get retracted down, but I messed that up. This powers, and this hides the stairs away, and then this is where madness happens. We do a weird sequence, I don't remember if this is how it is, it's something like this, with this, then we do this, and then we have a pulse at the end like that, I think, then we do this, and then we have this, this, it just works out, it's a weird sequence, I don't remember what it is, but yeah, that's how it works basically. So yeah, that's that, and let's actually get into building the closing. So the lever goes two blocks away from here, let's just remove these. Um, we're going to place a hopper timer here, this hopper timer controls the powering of this piston, in this spot. So we're going to place, it also controls the powering of these pistons here. So we're going to place a comparator. We're going to place two vortex beaters. Let me grab those. We're going to place a vortex beater, vortex beater, place a torch, an observer, a hopper, and then for now, move these out. Is when we put items inside, we're going to place four, um, that's going to retract. So when we flip this, you can see it's going to take a little bit to turn off. Those then extend, and then the opening, it basically gets retracted instantly. Well, not instantly, it's just when you flick it, it will get retracted, and then it takes a while before you flick it. So yeah, this controls, so we want these, we need to wait. So the reason why it takes a while and then close it and then, on the, and then instant on the opening is that this has to move in before these extend 
Then on the opening, these can just retract before this goes. So let's build this um, system down here. So we're going to place a repeater here with the dust. Now I'm going to forget some of this because I didn't really make the circuit, but um, yeah. So we're going to place a note block under here. This is the part of this piston. It's part of this piston. What we're going to do is place a hopper here, an observer, an observer, and an observer. And I believe there's a block here. I'm not sure. No, there's no block. We have another observer here. Um, we're going to take an output from... Okay, so let's do this up here. So we're going to place a block here. This is going to power this piston and this piston. We're going to place a filter computer here with, an, with two observers here. This will power this piston here when it's here. And then what we're going to do is loop it back around like this and this dust and that does a double extender and then we have to retract it for afterwards but the retraction comes in from when you unplug the lever um, we're also going to utilize this observer under here to power this piston at the right time so it can do the double extender um, over on this side, we're going to place this observer. This is going to power this piston. We're going to place a four-tier here. We're going to place an observer here. This will also power this piston, as well as this block, which bug powers this over here. Um, we're going to power this piston down here with um, a dust, a slab, with a fourth computer on it. And that will then go into. Um, hold on. Okay. So we're going to do some observer spam. So we're going to place an observer. Where is it? I don't. I didn't really make part of the side. I mostly did part of the other and the middle part. So place an observer there. We're gonna place an observer here and here. Place a filter computer on top of this. And that will power, I believe it's this observer here. Yep. Yeah. And then And then we're going to place from that observer an observer here, and then an observer here, and then a dust here. This is going to control the. Um, so this is going to get extended from this observer prime this, and it will also power this. Then the signal will come back around prime this again. So basically, does this, and that controls those pistons. Now, I'm not sure where this person gets a pulse from. I'm dumb. So we're going to have that. And I'm not sure if that's the entire side, but I'm not going to test it because I know the double extender is still missing. So we're going to place a redstone block here. Actually, first, let's kind of get the double extender in. Place a dropper fill with all your unstackable items. Place your hopper there. Place a place, um, just remove, just remove this double extender and this bottom piston. Place a torch, then we're going to place a slab all the way here. Move this as well and place a torch. 
Um, we're going to then place a comparator here. We're just going to turn them off. We're going to place this, this. We're going to place this observer. And then in here, we're going to place this double extender back. Um, this observer. That's why this block is here. So it gets pushed into here. And we need to place our a redstone block there. So the way that this works is quite simple. This is completely filled up with items, and this dust is signal string 15 into the side of this comparator. Now, because this is completely filled, this is outputting signal string 15. As you can see on the side of the F3 menu here, this is power 15 as well as this dust. When one item leaves, it will no longer be 15. I think it'll be 13 or 12 or something like that. Therefore, this will turn off doing a double extender. And then it will return back doing this. And the reason why we can't just have one item in here is because we need the signal, tr signal strength to reach all the way across. But if it's just one shovel, it will only reach the two but not the three. So that's why we fill it up completely because there's no room for an uh, extra comparator for subtracting. So we just use the fact that we can use the dust for 15 and it just works. As you can see, you can see from the front, three double extenders. And the way we power that double extender is quite simple. Um, we go from this observer into the block. I believe it's that. Yeah. Okay, so in theory, this should be all of this side. Um, I don't suggest you test it yet because I'm not sure if it will work. But it looks like it will work. So don't test it because yours might fail. So if mine fails, I can check if it does not fail. And there we go. So that's the closing. And you can see that this piston's out. So when we unclick it, you'll see it gets retracted. And then everything completely opens up for the view. Like so. Like so. Um, let's do this first. This. This, this. Okay, so that's um, this side. Um, this is probably the easier half of the door. Now let's get into the harder half of the door. We're going to place a dust here. We're going to place a sticky disk in here. We're going to place a resin block. We'll get to that in a second, but next we're going to place two observers here. Sticky piston here. Sorry, it's not. That is a repeater on a slab, and it's a slab for later. And we're going to place an observer out like this. So when the door's closed, this should be retracted, and the opening should be like this. And this will push back the first set of blocks, allowing for the sequence to basically work. So, in order for us to control this side, we need to make a um, kind of toggle system. So, yeah. So to make this toggle system, it's quite simple. We're going to place a, well, if this is where we're actually speed up. Place this. We're going to place a piston inward. Dropper here with three items inside. A dropper there. A hopper here. And a comparator. Here. We're going to place our first minecart on top of this. This isn't anything too complicated. Um, we're going to place a dust here. And I think I misplaced the position of that. I did. This actually just moved one block back. And that's why that's a slab. It's also a slab, so it doesn't power this piston here. So we're going to place a redstone block here. We're going to place this and this. So when that turns off, um, so when that turns off, basically, it's going to send um, a pulse until the rest of this side. Now, we need to actually, so basically on the closing, it's going to move one item up like this. And that's going to extend. And then it's also going to power this 
as well, but it's also going to power an item like this. Then it's also going to do something like this, and then eventually all the items will pretty much... So all the items get locked in here, and the reason why they don't get sent down is because this bus powers the block locking this. So only when this goes, the competitor will turn off, unlocking and sending the items back. And the way we'll actually power that is by having a hot break here, an observer, and then another observer here. And this controls whenever the side fires from the other side without having to toggle on the double look center, which was the initial plan. But instead so we used the double look center to control this thing here, which took the majority of the time. Okay, so let's um, build this side. So we need to flip this over, place this, use a hopper on top of on top of that. Actually, first from this hopper. Well, there's a hopper here, but there's also a hopper back there. I believe it's back there or something like that. Yeah. We're gonna place this, which has this note block. And then we're going to place this down here. This will power this piston to extend after this guy's gone. This will also power this piston. And with that as well, we're going to place um, from this hopper, we're going to place um, three observers up like this into a hopper to a fourth to computer. this into this block which bud powers this piston here when extended from this powering this piston as well and this single pushing everything back on the on the base layer rather and I believe there's something else missing which is the traction of this piston no it doesn't seem to have anything like that I think this piston just switched. Yeah, so basically, this piston and this piston get retracted when the final pulse of this goes. So, basically, what we have is so we have something like this, and this is repeated on both sides. If you place a block here and give this a one tick, this gets two pulses, but the first one's cancelled, so it only gets one. Then, if you give a four tick, with a bud, I believe it requires an update as well. It retracts, because this retracting retracts this piston instantly and then the one tick grabs it. So it basically just retracts it automatically. So yeah, that does a majority of this side. All is left is controlling whatever this thing is. And I'm before we do that, I want to show you how much this actually is. So don't toss it because here's my fail. You'll see that this item is powered because in this chest marker you can see we have one item and then we're going to later see this item and this item both move up. You're going to see if this gets pushed back as well as this piston got powered. So we're going to reset it. So let's actually build this. So the first thing we need to do is do our double extent. And the way we do that is quite simple. We're going to have our fourth computer here, um, let's, like that. We're going to have this here, with a dust and a block, another dust here. That dust is to power the this piston here when it's here, based on the sequence. And it also will power down into that hopper, which actually faces towards this way. Because what we're going to do here is build a dropper loop that's going to refire this circuit again. So the way that this works is quite simple. It, well, not simple, it's just, you know, sequencing. So we close it and then we open it. Okay, so we sent a four tick and it basically extended this and retracted this back. All is left is to 
do the rest of this top. And then to do that, what well what we're missing is also prime this piston. And the way we do that is by utilizing well part of this drop blue. We place this on a toggle and this is out. So this is actually like this. So this is will then um, it, it would extend the track back out, extending this. Then when we power the circuit again, so if we this a four tick, it because this is now gone, it's gonna do the double extender. Well, and then it's gonna get retracted. So if we power this once, there's the double extender on the bottom. Um, this would then go up, and then we power it again. There's a double extender at the top, and then that gets down. And then this basically does the first move of the extension. So basically, it's two double extenders. It's just we just need a toggle to refire it, and then the whole thing is done. So yeah, to do that, so we're um, with droppers. So we have this here, this dropper here, um, this dropper with an item inside gets powered from the double extender, moving the item up to here. No, it's there. Um, we're gonna place this. We're gonna place a chest line curve, and then we're gonna remove this, this, and this because we need to place um, some line curves. So we're gonna place. We're gonna push this observed in. You can see that this kind of fell, and this is what's gonna power. Um, this piston. So if we give this a four tick, you'll see that it would do the double extend on the bottom, but and then it would power this in the center. So, um, so that's this. We're gonna get a ch a hot line curve. We're gonna push it into a chest. Let me get that real quick. We're gonna push into a chest. And then we're gonna remove this, and then we're gonna push a, a chest line cart into a fence. Which I forgot to put in the item list to position line carts. So we're gonna place this, we're gonna place this, and this to keep this in back. We need this back, this back, as well as. Um, this back. So what we're gonna do is position the pistons like this. Place a lever. Flip both. That's directional. And this has to be extended. And then under here, we're gonna place a comparator like that. So in theory, this should be the whole door. Um, don't test it. Place an item in this bottom dropper, like before. So the way that this works is the way that this double center works or whatever. So the double center will retract this, move the item up to here. And then when this extends here, powering this, it's going to do the first move. And then when this toggle goes, powering this fourth for the first time, goes into this, moving the item through this delay back down to here. This double extender has already powered, so if the item stays in there, this comparator will lock the four tick for three for four ticks. You might think it's three and a half, but when the comparator receives an item from above like this, you can see the minecart's going down into the hopper. Um, it gets a four tick, so it sends a four tick into this, refiring this whole circuit. But then because it's it's gonna power this dropper and this one, but the it, the item won't go through because the rest of lock's already powering this, and you can't power a dropper that's already being powered. So basically, it stops. And yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So this should be a whole door. Well, it's not really a door, but I guess you could say it is. So the retract, that gets the first pulse, first double extend to toggle, and then that. So yeah, that is the entire thing done. You can cover it up with your stairs or transparent blocks. Um, place, I'm just going to use glass, like I used there, and you can now use this in your base.
to hide your enchantment table for some reason. Is why would you need to hide this thing? It doesn't hold anything. And like I said before, I was going to show you this. I'll get a sword and then some lapis. This goes up to level, I think, 24. 24. And if you go to the back here and place these two, you can get a level 28. That's a pretty bad sword. And you can't add extra two bookshelves anymore. Um, I'm not sure how you can get level 30. I believe you can do this. I'm not sure. Yeah, this gets a level 30. So placing bookshelves, placing an extra bookshelf like this will get you level 30. But level 28 is still pretty good. So yeah, that's the entire thing done. Hopefully you enjoy. Um, I have a special piston door thing planned for 100 subscribers, so subscribe if you want to see that. It's going to be amazing of how much I spammed entities in that thing. So I won't say much about that until we get to 100 subs. So, yeah. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something of how this thing works, and now you can use this in your base. So, hopefully you enjoy. I'll see you next time. So, bye.